to get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang. Smash that description link below. If you want to see uncensored evidence photos and follow along with this case, go to talkmurder.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Talk Murder Me podcast. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. We live stream every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join us there. You can also find us on any podcasting app, Talk Murder to Me. If you like this and like true crime, check out our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees. Brianne, she's doing a fantastic job. That is true crime out in nature. And yeah, she's got some really good stories there. And if you want to see the episode photos, hit the description below or talkmurder.com. Anyway, that's all I got so i guess let's get it going tonight we're going to friday four lesbians walk into a seedy bar a quote seedy gay nightclub in brisbane october 20th 1989 four lesbians walk into a bar and order champagne hmm. they're celebrating <laughs> do you order champagne to a seedy bar <laughs> dun 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 maybe <laughs> if i was celebrating y'all don't think that was like funny no yes. like the start of a bad joke it is the start of a bad joke <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane, Australia. I think I'm saying that right. Brisbane. Lauren can yell at you if you're not. Brisbane. We're going to Brisbane, um, Australia. <laughs> We're going to a, quote, seedy gay nightclub. Why but, isn't it just a seedy nightclub? Why did we have to use the... Because, because it's, it's, a, a gay it's a gay bar. It's a gay bar. Okay. <laughs> Four lesbians were drinking champagne. Brisbane, she says. Brisbane. Yeah. They- so we're going to Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me show you three of these individuals. Three out of the four? Here they are right here. Exclusive nine news. Where's the fourth person? I'm assuming the fourth person is dead. Is that correct or incorrect? Maybe the fourth person is alive. Or the murderer? So hmm. these are the the suspects right here. I don't want to sound like... Then don't. Nas- yeah, then don't say <laughs> it. Know, then let's move on. No, wait. No, I was going to say, I don't want to sound like <laughs> nationalist, but I'd say that the... Nationalist? The, but the lady in the middle looks Australian. How would that be nationalist? Nationalist. I don't know. She just <laughs> looks Australian. I don't know. They're all Australian. Yeah, I know they all they are, but like, but I would say that the lady they in all the middle, talk like this and and have kangaroos as pets. That's not how they talk. <laughs> That's oh not how God. they talk. <laughs> I swear to God, we did not have 10 shots in the break. I swear. I don't want you guys to get bogged down with the names. I know there's four, but there's one name and one person that matters for this episode. Okay. okay? That's the ringleader of these four lesbians. All right. Okay. But just know that they're all 24 and 25 years old. Four of them, 24, 25, they're split up into two partners. So, so it's a, like a set of couples? A set Double date. A set of couples. Now, two of them, their name is Tracy. Okay, so I might get a little confused. Is it Tracy and Tracy or Tracy and someone else plus Tracy and someone else? And I just told you not to get bogged down on that. Tracy says the following, quote, Tracy came up to me and said, come with me. And I just went. Uh, This is around 11 p.m. Like I said, October 20th, Friday nights, 1989. Tracy, the main character tonight, Tracy Wigington. Okay. I was just about to ask which Tracy. (laughs) Which I'm probably going to be calling Wiggum. Like Chief Wiggum. <laughs> Why can't you just call her call Tracy her Wiggs. W? Wiggs. Wiggs. We'll call her Wiggs from now on. Okay. Tracy Wiggs is the main character. Wiggington. All right. Quote, Tracy came up to me and said, come with me. And I just went. Now, Tracy's the ringleader of this pack. This is 11 p.m. And they get into her car, all four of them. And they drive around for 20 minutes. So they leave this seedy lesbian bar after Tracy basically commands them to leave. They get into her car. And she's not actually driving her car. Another person is. But they drive drive around for 20 minutes. They're looking for anyone, male or female, doesn't really matter. What do you think they're looking for? Like, what, what are they going to do? What's four lesbians driving in the car want to do with either a male or a female at midnight? <laughs> I, I have no idea where you're going with this. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense because, no, no, I'm I'm just trying to be PC here, like, because- Oh, if drugs, you, Wolfie says. Hug, <laughs> drugs and hugs. Hugs and drugs. <laughs> Those things do go together. Hugs and drugs? This is the man they find right here. I'll put his photo on talkmer.com you can go there to the blog talkmer.com you can comment too if you you want to and i'll comment back and so this is the guy they find can you describe this guy for us he's an older gentleman maybe in his maybe his early 
early 50s. I don't know. He kind of looks a little old on the older side there. Um, But he doesn't have gray hair, balding, brownish hair, white guy. All right. So that's the man that they find. Now, this man, his name is Edward Baldock. He is 47 years old. He is a grandfather and a father of five. They spot this man. He is actually really drunk at this point when they find him. Now, keep in mind, they're driving around in their car looking for somebody and they find this man leaning against a pole like a street lamp he's really drunk he literally just pissed on the pole he is just oh, just completely effed up in fact he was so drunk that police when they tested his blood alcohol content level was 0. 0.31 whoa which 0. 0.08 is about two beers and that's the legal driving limit here in u.s what is it in australia probably like point point thirty or <laughs> 300. <laughs> They're always drunk there. Point 30 and point 300 <laughs> are the same. You do realize that, correct? I don't know what it is there. I mean, I guess they just drive Probably their, pretty similar. They just get in their dune buggies and play with their dingoes. <laughs> Edward Baldock, when they checked his BAC level was point 0.31. That is really high. That's probably like 10 beers at least. It's probably how much gin sorry I drank today. No, this is what I drank. This is what I have not drank. He was walking home to his wife. They've been married for quite a while and and they were happily married and he's walking home. He just leaning against the pole just to collect himself before he makes that journey home. Four women pull up, four lesbians pull up in their car and they offer him a ride. He accepts because he doesn't want to walk and he gets in the back seat. And then Wig, Tracy Wigington, takes his hand and, and clasps it in hers and is holding it like their boyfriend and girlfriend. Odd. Okay. Very odd. They're in the back seat and then she is all cuddled up with them. And she asked if he wanted a good time. And he says yes. Now keep in mind she's a lesbian, so she she's not interested in this guy. So obviously she's playing him. Is she looking for monetary uh, exchange for said things? Perhaps this is where they go right here. So this is in uh, Lauren. You can tell us if you've been here. The Ole Park in Queensland. This is actually the exact spot where they went down here. The trash cans. And I verified this. There was a a news station that it had, and I actually looked up the exact spot in this park. So it's right down here they drove with this man. So right here next to the Brisbane River. What is it? Brisbane? Brisbane. Brisbane. Right here next to the Brisbane River and they go into this park. Which, Why even bother? Why even bother asking? He does it to bother us. Which was which was at the time a uh, abandoned yacht club I found. So I guess here's like the old dock or whatever for the yacht club. Oh man, that sounds a lot less like exciting than what I thought you meant. Like I thought you meant that there were some abandoned yachts there and that maybe there were... Who has abandoned yachts? Yeah, no shit. People that belong to the abandoned yacht club. They just have... They have a club of people who have abandoned their yachts and are for, for taking for us Talk Murder to Me owners so that we can finally get our boat called Yacht Murder to Me. They pull up to this park. No one's out there. Wigington gets out with this man and they start undressing. They go right down to the river and... He gets naked, all except his socks. She promised him a good time, and apparently she's going to give it to him. You can't skinny dip with your socks on. He is wasted at this point. He has no idea what's going on. She walks up behind him. He is completely naked except for his socks, and she pulls a knife from her back pocket. And this is what she would later say. Tracy Wigington later said in her police interview, I walked around him. I took my knife out of my back pocket. I said nothing and stabbed him. Damn. So this is just all of a sudden, all of a sudden, out of nowhere. At this point, Edward starts screaming, although he's still really, really drunk. He tries to fight back and she stabs him again. I stabbed him on the other side of the neck and I continuously stabbed him. I grabbed him by the hair, pulled him back, stabbing him in the front of the throat. At that stage, he was alive. All right, I'm going to show you the women involved. So I'll put this on talkmore.com. This is Tracy Wigington up here, all right? And this is two of the other ones, which I can't... They're all the same to me. There's a, there's a lot of people. But this is the main main one right here, Tracy Wig Wigington. Okay. At this point, he is spurting blood. She stabbed him multiple times and only in one spot. The first was the back of the neck. And then she continued to stab him in his neck. That's the only spot she would stab him. One of the lesbians in the car, Lisa Pachinksky, she collapses on the ground and she's crying. She's bawling her eyes out. Oh my God, 
what is happening? She clearly cannot handle her murder. Now, what I didn't mention earlier is that when this guy, this grandfather and father of five, 47-year-old Edward Baldock, starts to get naked, the ringleader, Tracy Wigington, thinks that she can't handle him by herself. So she actually runs back to the car and she asks all three of the other lesbians if any one of them could help her. They all like refuse, but Lisa Pachinski, she did say she'll come up there. But when she got there, she got too shy. She didn't want to, she didn't want to participate in the murder. She just collapses and now she's bawling. Did they know that the the three in the car, did they know that she was planning to kill him? Yeah, they didn't. Oh. But like I said, this is, why do you think this is? Wait, you said, yeah, they didn't. No, yeah, they did. But why do you think this is? All right, let's go back for a second. We started in a, a CD gay bar, four lesbians, they get in their car, they're riding around to find somebody, anybody, male or female. She is going to pretend she's some kind of sex worker, prostitute, and get this guy in a random park and stab him. So why? Uh, What's the motive here? Obviously, the guy doesn't have money because he's walking. He's not driving his car. I mean, he may have like 20, 30 bucks or whatever. But he probably looked wealthy. Look at that picture you showed us. He was in a a bow tie. Don't wear bow ties to non-fancy events. Before the murder, she goes back to the car and asks them if anyone can help her. Lisa says she would, but she says, quote, I need help. This bastard's too strong. Hmm. So now Lisa and her go back, but Lisa got scared. She didn't want to participate in the murder. So that's when Tracy Wigington decided to just go in all all at it herself. And she is the the one that is stabbing this guy. I stabbed him in the back of the neck and again and cut the nerves. I sat and watched him die. This man was stabbed at least 15 times. I saw in one report it said 24 times. 15 to 24 times in the neck with two knives. She actually pulled out another knife, a small other knife. She used two knives to stab this man in the neck. And now she's sitting down and watching him die. They were drinking champagne and now all of a sudden she is watching this dude just die. It's just so random, right? Like, what the fuck? Like, what? what is the motive here? There's yeah, feels just very random. no motive at all, it seems. In fact, when police did arrest these women, they actually thought that Wigington was the mistress of this guy, which they didn't even know each other. This was a non... They weren't related. They had no idea who this guy was they picked up. But at this point, she is watching him die right there in the park, right by the water, right by the river. She didn't waste any time after that. She had stabbed this guy 15 times in the neck for a reason and now she's just sitting there watching die and she's wasting her time and this is uh, from the Courier Mail quote the blood gurgling from Baldock's almost severed head looked like a fountain the fountain of blood is coming out she is watching it he is face up laying back laying on his back Wigington jumps on top of this man because she is tired of wasting her time she did this for a reason and she's more importantly tired of wasting the blood. She jumps on top of this dying man and she puts her mouth to the neck and she starts drinking and feasting on the blood spurting out of his arteries. He's a lesbian vampire. <laughs> What? All right. Damn. Kim Jervis, who was also there, is one of the the ladies in the car. She was waiting and she saw this event and said the following. That Tracy Wigington, quote, looked like a person would look if they had just sat down to a three course dinner, Mm. end quote. Lisa told the detectives the following. Lisa Pachinski told detectives in 1989, I knew she was going to kill him, but I couldn't stop her because of her craving, her craving for blood. Have you ever seen a shark frenzy? A feeding frenzy? From the Courier Mail, in her chilling police interview a few days after the attack, Wigington said she felt nothing as she stabbed Baldock and even sat down to smoke a cigarette while she watched him die. This is him. This is how he was found. Look at this. Look at the the stabs. Now he is face down, but this is like, there's no stab wounds here in the back. Only on the neck. It's only on the neck. She stabbed this guy in the neck 15 times for a reason so she can drink the blood coming out. There's that main artery right there. She put her mouth right on that artery and just started drinking. It's warm. She's drinking it. She's feasting. Just like we ate all that chocolate earlier. Fuck, stop. She's just making me want to puke. I didn't do it. I mean, I'm not the lesbian vampire. Um, Lauren has a really great question. How did these women find each other? It can't have been in the awesome seedy club with banging tunes. (laughs) Banging tunes. (laughs) 
I feel like, wait, this is 1985. I feel like wasn't um, Joy Division really popular in, yeah. in that time? So they are obviously gothic. Let, let me go back to the, the photo Who's, right quick. Like, what, you can what? tell that they're kind of gothic, right? No. Or, uh, I couldn't really tell. Like, I, like I don't the, see heavy eyeliner. Yeah, but they're wearing black, black and black hair. The other um, one on the right is wearing white. Yeah. Well, she's the ringleader. Yeah. I know. <laughs> like, I'm not getting, I'm not getting over I can't gothic tell, vibes. Uh, can you I be can I be totally honest with you? Can you go back to that picture? I can't tell anything about the, the any of those women yeah. except the middle person is from Australia. Well, but they're all from Australia. That is very racist, Jen. It's not racist, it's nationalist. <laughs> They're all Australian. I know they are, but like the one in the middle looks Australian and I stick to my story, but I can't tell anything else other other than that about any of them. And, and I would I would have to say that you would have to give me more proof that they were gothic or even lesbian from that picture. You can't tell that someone, you, you especially nowadays, you can't judge someone on one characteristic of themselves from one picture unless they're wearing a t-shirt that says, I am blank. Like you can't just judge someone on even their appearance. then they could be yeah they could be making a joke yeah you don't know like what which one of fifty four genders he she or it may be these days. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it is not a gender. It is it's not, not a descriptor that people use. No, it's not. It's it's they. Anyway. They? Oh yes. my God, move on. Move what do you on. mean they? If it's Jesus one person. Move on it's not- before I get angry, because I'm already angry, but I don't want to get angry out loud. <laughs> okay. Four lesbians walk into a bar. <laughs> With two five-inch blade knives used by the same person, Wigington, Tracy Wigington, she had stabbed this guy 15 times, only in the neck, only around the back of the neck, surprise attack to drink the blood. Now, Tracy Wigington is a big girl, okay? At, at the time, she was 250 pounds, but she's over six feet. She's a she's a big she's person. She's tall. My size. Not, not, no, I'm not talking about overweight. She's just like, like a big built, like six two. Like my size. She's She's tall. Yeah. She's very tall. With 250 like, pounds. If you see me yeah. walking around, yeah. So the fact that she needed help, like, I mean, she didn't need help. This guy is not 250 pounds, but I don't know. Well, it's hard to hold someone down if you're drinking their blood. But she told detectives in 1989 that when she stabbed him first in the back of the neck, quote, hard enough to drive the knife up to the hilt. Ooh. I then withdrew the knife and stabbed him in the side of the neck. I stabbed him in the other side of the neck and I continuously stabbed him, end quote. So, who asked about uh, how did they meet Lauren? Yeah, Lauren asked. Because Lauren's from here, so she's like, I don't know. How did, how did this <laughs> merry band get together? So, let's talk about friendships here. Tracy Wigington, the ringleader, is kind of the, the outlier in this situation. All three of the other girls, and I'm going to tell you their names. However, like I said, don't don't uh, get bogged down into them. They all got sentencing, but to make this simple, let's not get bogged down into them. But I will tell you their names just... Just, just to do it, right? You have Tracy Ann Waugh, who is 24, Lisa Pachinski, which is 25, and Kim Jervis, which was 24. And then, obviously, Tracy, Tracy Wigg- Wigginton, the, the main one. Okay. The other ones obviously were involved, but they're, you know... More bystanders. Yeah. So, Tracy Wigginton here is the, the outlier. All the other girls knew each other at first. Kim Jervis was the lover of Tracy Waugh, and they were friends, really good friends, with with Lisa Pachinski, a former heroin addict. Let me show you Lisa right quick. Let's put a face to these names. All right, so this is Lisa right here. Pachinski, that's her. That's Lisa Pachinski at okay. the time. Okay, and this is, I know it kind of looks like uh, the other one, but it's not. And this is uh, Wa. This is Tracy Wa. Okay. All right, and this is the last one, Jervis. That was the one in the middle that Jen thinks racially looks like an Australian. Not racially, <laughs> nationally. <laughs> Am I wrong? (laughs) Am I wrong? And this is this is Kim um, Tracy Wigginton right here. (laughs) She looks fun. (laughs) Fun as in a lesbian way. As as in as in a vampire, apparently. (laughs) 
<laughs> Kim Jervis was a lover of Tracy Wad. They were friends with a former heroin addict named Lisa Pachinski. They met Tracy Wigington only weeks before. This is, they only known her for like okay. three weeks. This is a three week thing. They just. The other girls had a history, but Tracy was the, Tracy Wigington was the newcomer. Exactly. She's the newcomer, the new girl, the mean girl. Is that what it's called? Mean girls. The main Tracy Wigington and Lisa Pachinski, they became a couple because the other two girls were already a couple. So now Lisa became the property of Tracy Wigington. Oh, it was it was a property. Of? It was a domineering relationship. Sounds unhealthy. Extremely toxic. E extreme toxic sort of. Yeah. But she was dominated by Tracy Wigington's aggressiveness. From the People newspaper, May 1st, 1994, quote, as they lay in bed together, Wigington complained she was hungry. To please her, Pachinski used a tourniquet to pump up the veins in her arm, then nicked her wrist so that Wigington could suck her blood. Pachinski later said she dominated me more than anyone has in my life. She had some sort of inner power. They're sitting in bed. Now, they've only known each other for weeks. And Tracy Wigington says the following. She says, quote, I can't eat solid foods. I need blood to survive on. So they only known her for three weeks. So for these three weeks, she is only drinking blood. That is how she lives. She like is, she doesn't eat any other food? She eats no other food. She is only drinking human blood. Oh, no. Is that healthy? Like, can you survive off that? I don't like that. I mean, there's a lot of iron. Yeah, but like, that's it. Don't look at me. Ew, that's a that's consisting of a lot of blood. I mean, I would like put in recipes and stuff. I wouldn't oh, maybe God. freeze it like a freeze pop of blood, like a cherry. Oh, cherry. nasty. <laughs> it doesn't taste like cherries, John. It tastes like. Maybe get that that rich, nice, juicy menstrual no. type of blood no. that's real it's thick. Just stop, stop, stop it's right like there. It's like metallic. Like, <laughs> metallic. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, oh, I used no. to get <laughs> I used to get really bad bloody noses when I was a kid. I think Brit and I think Brittany just got here when I said the thing about menstrual. Uh, Colleen just joined. She said a little gift to herself was becoming a Suprema. Welcome, Colleen. Here's what you've missed. <laughs> And like I used to, it would make me sick all of the blood Wait, that what? I would. I used to get bloody noses really badly when I was a kid. One of my friends growing so you up would had drink bloody it? noses. It kind of like runs oh. down your throat, and it's awful. It's awful. Ugh. Like that's what I'm. I, I keep like I can taste it when you're talking about this. It makes me kind of. Well, tell us wheezy. how it tastes. Like it, metal, like blood. Is like it, it's sweet. No. no. Sour. No. Yeah, it's, it's metallic. Blood. Yeah. It's metallic. That's that. That's. I kind of want to taste. Them right oh, now. Cut, <laughs> cut, cut yourself because that ain't gonna be us. Nope. I, I mean, I, I mean, like, Give don't harm a paper yourself, cut. but like, if you want to stick like a, like a, like get like a diabetes test strip and then taste it, I don't like know. Like pennies, Walt so, said. That's a good description. Yeah. For weeks, at least for weeks, the only thing that they saw her consume was blood. They, they'd be sitting in the bed, listening to Talk Murder Me, watching, watching uh, true crime TV. Back in 90. 1985. 1985. They're sitting there watching Netflix, flipping the channel, boop, boop, boop. And she's like, man, I'm getting hungry. And then Lisa Pachinski was like, okay, well, feeding time. She slits her wrist, nicks herself. And then she puts her wrist over to, to Tracy Wigginton and she's like, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. No, I don't like that. That no. is fucked. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's what happened. What the fuck? Like, you what? It no. Right there. Like, I, oh, no. She said she pumped. I'm no longer hungry she for said lunch. She, yeah, I what? mean, it's like. It's just blood. It is, uh, I was feeling Chinese food, but, like, now I'm not hungry. Oh, like, fuck. You know what would have been great for this episode? We should have drank Bloody Mary's. Oh. Uh, <laughs> too bad you didn't give us a hint. Yeah, you don't give hints anymore, so, John. I get your hint. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> It's all on you. Like, we don't do cocktails because we don't know what to make. So we've been drinking beer in a shot. And I'm okay with that because I really enjoy beer. But, like, you used to give us hints for us to make custom cocktails. And now you don't. So that's on you. My Favorite Murder doesn't do hints. Well, fuck My Favorite Murder. <laughs> We're not My Favorite Murder. <laughs> if that's what you're looking for, then go home. Oh, my God. Or tune in to My Favorite Murder. <laughs> well, we don't want you here. We're a different audience. <laughs>
All right. I mean, right there, it says that Pachinski used a tourniquet to pump her veins in her arm, then nicked her wrist so that Wigington can suck her blood. So they were living with each other. As soon as they met, they moved in. They were living with each other. So, I mean, I don't know if you can live off blood. I don't know. Never tried it. But I will tell you that if she was sneaking food in, she was doing a damn good job because they only saw her consume blood. So at this she point... She had to have been eating food too. So at this point, go back to the murder where she's feasting one of the women in the car said she looked like she just had a three course meal so she is drinking all this blood like she is so so hungry for blood it makes you think that yeah it was kind of legit you know what i'm saying like she was starving and that's why she was drinking it all of like a fountain was this her first murder or bloodlust i do have to say like there are better ways if you're low on iron to solve that for example taking iron supplements or or chewing ice. Yeah, I you wonder, don't need to I drink if blood. she was anemic. Yeah. yeah, but no, she has to get fed. It's sustenance. So it's got but, proteins. But, but and stuff maybe in it. she was craving it because she was anemic. But yeah. she was also hungry. Well, Listen, I, I think there's something wrong with her. I but would that's say, just me. Yeah, she would drink her blood at least four times a week. Tracy has mind power," said Tracy Wa. Ooh, you can't stop yourself from doing what she tells you to do. A week after th- all these ladies meet, they know that Tracy Wigginton is starving because the the blood that she's consuming she would later say that Lisa her new girlfriend has a weak heart and the four times a week feeding festival that they go through where she nicks her wrist it's not working she needs more than that to survive all right she is a yeah, vampire you need like food so they plan this whole thing so she can be fed you know they gather at Kim and Tracy's flat in Brisbane Australia the walls were decorated with graveyard pictures and there was even a quote stolen headstone in the middle of the oh, apartment that's this, not cool. no that's bad juju. I know this is the actual the actual headstone that they found right here Michael yeah. Ryan in memory uh, of Michael Ryan did they know Michael Ryan like you don't steal someone's headstone yeah, who you don't know up. no I Anyone's. guess they just fucking were listening to the cure and joy division and just like let's go steal this headstone but I yeah, like the cure this is the so they had photos of the gravestones and it's Friday, you see I'm in love. you see a, you see all these photos these are like actual photos of graves hmm. like all these are all polaroids or whatever posted all over the wall and then they had this actual tombstone sacred to the memory of michael ryan that's awful yeah isn't it fucked yeah. who does that shit i mean look it still's got the dirt on. it's like got where they took it out the dirt what the hell they didn't know him or it was just random, random. But that then that's worse like if it was your brother or like your friend and it meant something to you. Well, number Even one, still, you, don't you don't steal take it. it. Like, because those you're things are very lose. expensive. They also. are expensive, but like, why would you take that? Like, wh- yeah, oh, look at me. I got this headstone. So cool. No. Well, you there's want- clearly other mental things going on in her mind. I mean, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. But yeah, but like, why would you steal that if you have no connection to that? Why person? is she consuming someone's blood as her meal? You know, I like mean, something wrong up there. Yeah, I mean, well, if you go back to that picture of her, let me let me let me give you my interpretation of what her being crazy. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she's she's fun from what Nicole <laughs> <laughs> Nicole the lesbians. <laughs> Why do we Sorry. have to categorize <laughs> the going on? All right. Uh, so you think she has some mental issues going on? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mental disorders plus anemia. I can't eat solid foods. I need blood to survive on. So at this point, they're just, I you mean, can't they're just. eat solid foods. It's called a smoothie. It's not murder. It's just survival at this point. Now, they would later say that they didn't really think this was real. They thought she was just kind of bullshitting. Like, yeah, okay. She's going to kill someone and drink their blood. Sure. Okay. What? Whatever, but they still went with her, right? The plan is actually really brilliant. This is a good fucking plan to bury a body. All right, we'll take notes. Okay, take notes on this Hold one because on. I've never heard this before and I think this is brilliant. The initial plan was to kill someone random like they did and then take the body after she drank the blood. They had already mapped this out. They were going to take the body, the dead body, put it in the trunk, drive to a cemetery with a freshly buried grave. So what happens 
like when someone dies, when you go to the funeral, the grave is already bi- the grave is already dug. Right. So those people, whoever dug the grave, dug it, dug it the prior the prior day or whatever, mm-hmm. a couple of days before. Yeah. They were going to dig up some dirt like in the hole six feet under and put the body there above the, the no, stone that was already there. No, but no, there's no head. There's no. There's nothing. It's just a big hole in the ground. The grave is just the hole, the six feet hole. Uh huh. So they were going to take the body and bury it deeper than the six feet in the grave covered up so the next day when the funeral procession goes on and they lower the casket they would actually be lowering the casket over the dead body mm-hmm. which is pretty fucking brilliant yeah I, i'll give it to i them. mean dude that was a good I, idea. it is a really fucking good idea if you can get away with it because you know number one they're never gonna find it and if it smells oh well it's a fucking cemetery plus like are they really gonna dig up or pull up an, a dead body and who would the fuck would ever think that i think i think it's one of the best ideas i've ever heard that's that is a a smart that is someone some serial killer is listening to this and it's like oh all right perfect (laughs) well not even a serial killer just a killer but i would say that it would be a smarter idea to take the dirt from a grave that was fresh like already dug and covered and to dig like four feet down and then to cover it up again because you don't have then the murdered body is on is on top <laughs> the murdered body's on top, but if you put it everything back, they're not going to look there because the, the the person was just buried. Yeah, that but they can tell. It would work too. Yeah, but yeah. no, it's they. You can t- if you dig up something, you can tell it's freshly dug. the The dirt looks different. It's not. Uh, it's not weathered like the other dirt. Right. So they'll know if someone has dug up something. But if that body was buried the same day that you put it in there, then then what is the difference? Like if the if they had a few. Funer- so you're just like, saying, oh, no, why no, no, don't no. you put it on top of the casket instead of the bottom of the casket? I don't understand. Right. Like what? The- no, <laughs> it would work as well. <laughs> what the fuck? It would work. It would work as well because number one, like they, if, okay, if you're going under the six feet, if you're going eight feet down, all right, you still we don't have need, to dig. We don't, you don't need to go into you don't have still to dig. Dig. two feet of packed dirt versus digging up like no, five feet. They're not going to go look in there and inspect it. Like you just got to cover the body, you know? Right. So why would you work harder, not smarter? So you're talking about going to a freshly dug grave and then digging up three feet or four feet to put the body in and then covering it it's instead of than... jumping down there and digging up one foot and putting the body down there. Yeah, like, because the... you, it's easier to get out of than what you have to work. What to get out of? Six feet. You... you have to go down six feet into the dirt and then climb out. I feel out. like we are arguing over something that Jesus is not Christ. that important. It's they like are fucking, both great ideas. You just do parkour to get back up. It's not that big of a deal. Not everyone is capable of parkour, sir. That was the idea. Now let's talk about Tracy Wigington right here. What kind of life do you think she had growing up? This is her as a young uh, young vampire. I mean, that vampiress. looks like a professional like mall photo right there. I would say that she did not care for the life that she grew up. In. She looks like a young vampiress. Potentially. Long, long, <clears throat> long hair. All right. So this is Tracy Wigington. Her life story, which is the main character, that's what we're going to get into it. Look at this photo. Tell me what you think about this. Can you, you tell what her life is like? This is her right here in the back. A happy family? I would say that she was forced to follow the norms of her family. Does her family look wealthy? Um, I don't know if I would say wealthy, but middle like... Middle class. They look, okay. look like they're in a good spot. Happy. Everyone seems happy. I don't know. So her family was extremely wealthy growing up. Private school, whatever. Her family, they were millionaires. So they were in the polo clubs and all this stuff. Hmm. However, for her, she was the outcast in her schools. It started from middle school, the strange behavior... And then she became known in her later grades as a, quote, aggressive lesbian. So she was very outgoing, very controversial, always getting in trouble with just the outcast, just being different. However, she did have a very good life as far as financials growing up. I'm not saying that she wasn't abused or whatever. In fact, she would later claim and psychiatrists, multiple psychiatrists who have diagnosed her would also agree with this statement that between the ages of 8 and 11 years old, she was constantly molested and raped by mm. her grandfather. Uh, so that had a, awful. that had a huge impact. During those times, as I said earlier, she was the outcast. So even at eight years old, she became well, sh- show out. Know, show I just want to know what you mean by aggressive lesbian. Like she was she was open about her sexuality no. and forced it upon other people. Is that what you mean? Like or was she was she was a lesbian and was like physically used, like what do you mean by aggressive lesbian? I don't know if I like that term. That's a good question. 
she was expelled for, quote, molesting other pupils. Well, end quote. that's not OK. So if that tells you what kind of aggressive lesbian, I'm not using the word aggressive lesbian because I made it up. This was this was actually in the report. She was the outcast. Look at her family again. I, I couldn't tell if this is her grandfather or not. I try to look it up, but it's the, the photo actually said these are her maternal parents in the back. So I'm guessing and this is her niece. I'm guessing that that's her grandparents. I'm, I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure, though, but they were millionaires. And look how tall she is. I mean, she might be on a platform, but she is a she's a big girl. You know, she's a big girl. You tall know family. Saying? Tall family. Yeah. So between the eight and 11, she was horribly molested, apparently, from what the psychiatrist would later agree with when they, you know, when they did their diagnosis. She was granted 35,000 euros as an inheritance from her grandfather, which is about 75,000 to 80,000 dollars today in, in in real money. Mm-hmm. I mean, American dollars, not euros. That's fake. Real dollars. <laughs> I mean, euros, euros, a.k.a. FTX cryptocurrency. <laughs> just stupid. Bitcoin. All right. So she was granted 35. Jen, stop looking at live chat. She was she was granted 35,000 euros as an inheritance, but she quickly spent it, all of it on a lesbian marriage. She spent all of it to her new wife. And she actually, after that, had to get a job as a bouncer in a gay nightclub to sustain assist because she had no other prospects or whatever and she spent all, all of her inheritance. So if you go look at that picture again just look at it right away. You can tell that she I mean like the hat and stuff. You can tell that the family's got money. I mean I wouldn't like, have known like. You don't think so? Okay. I wouldn't have guessed that from, from I mean hey it's one photo. It's so. a family photo. Yeah. Like it could have well, been taken but I, I, outside you, in their backyard. You I don't, don't know that. I don't have photos like th- I mean I have photos of me like this now but back in the day I don't have photos like this. You know. Small photo. Well, well, it looks like a like a typical JC Penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like photo. I don't know if I would say that she was wealthy because she has a photo like that. I mean, she was probably like, you know. But, but anyway, they were wealthy. She wanted a baby real bad. So, quote, she and the club owner had sex in front of six friends. She became pregnant but miscarried, end quote. She also had a live in lover at the time of all this. Her name was Donna Stabe, but she's not. She didn't know about it. So we're not talking about her. She wasn't involved in the murder, but she did have an obsession just like her girlfriend Wigington with horror movies, which they made. So this is this is the 80s. So the satanic panic. Mm-hmm. So the horror movie, like, I mean, obsession with horror movies. is So to fucking I, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, HP Lovecraft. You're stuff. not drinking people's blood. though. But back in the day, obviously, anyone that liked that horror movies and read that stuff, you know, was Satan worshippers, you know, so, so that's that's just a term of the time, I guess. From the People newspaper, May 1st, 1994, the night before the murder, they repeatedly watched a sequence of a man being shot in the head, his skull exploding over and over again in slow motion. So let's talk about her psychology. She underwent hypnosis. The doctors determined, quote, unanimously in their belief that this was the real deal, end quote. Following the release of the details of the hypnosis, the media latched on to one incendiary quote. I'd like to slice the top of someone's head and say, think, let me see you think. She boasted that she was, quote, the devil's wife. She was obsessed with devil worship and the occult. At this time, she would only go out at night. She would never go out during the day. Well, she doesn't look that white, I guess. I don't know. I mean, th- I guess this is before the murder. But I mean, <laughs> that that pick is like, dang, like she looks very energetic, very. Um... Yeah, wouldn't have wouldn't have guessed vampire from that. No, book, would sure. not have guessed vampire but may have guessed like very um what's the word i'm looking for like ex extrovert very extrovert yeah yeah so she would only go out during the nighttime she would never go out during the day just like in uh in uh, my favorite movie uh twilight so she was fascinated by black magic and death she also avoided mirrors <laughs> which is that a thing i guess it is uh i think like the vampire thing you is that you can't see, see your yourself. reflection yeah, yeah but why would yeah. you avoid them i don't know well what if she, i guess you what if she did it's a vampire Empire thing. What if I, she didn't like her own appearance though? Jet? Like, but she can't why. see it. I guess you would avoid buying it because it would save you money. You wouldn't have to go to Kmart and buy a mirror or like, Target. I need a new mirror in my in my room. Tracy Ann Waugh said about Wigington, "quote She was a devil worshiper who could disappear, leaving only her cat's eyes visible." <laughs> 
Uh, at the time, she was drinking Paskinski's blood, but she had a weak heart, like I said, and she couldn't give her any more blood. Before they met her, what was she living on? Well, she was going to butcher shops and collecting blood from pigs and goats. So this is her at the time. This is probably right at the time right here of her. So that's her right there. She got uh, pentagrams and tattoos. tattoos. I mean, this is Satan incarnate right here. She doesn't look like Satan incarnate. So how did they get arrested? They're playing obviously to bury this guy under under a coffin, grave yeah. under a coffin didn't work out because she actually forgot her bank card they drove back to the scene after that they were going to go back the next morning early in the morning take the body to the cemetery so they weren't going to take him right away before he started to like decompose and smell apparently not but they drove back to the scene because Wigington forgot her bank card and they were stopped by a routine patrol officer who was just doing regular checks and Lisa Pachinski, her lover, didn't have her license and was driving driving Tracy Wigginton's car. The next morning, also, the body was found by two walkers in the park and this is what they saw right here. This is the body. This is how they saw oh. it. So you see you see the sock still yep. on. Yeah. yeah. And, and something's around his wrist something. tied up. I guess that's his shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. There's actually video footage of her going to show where she killed the body like literally the next day mm. they arrested her and she was just an open book yeah i did it is where i put it mm. you know and she was both she was boasting for this interesting 100 boasting i'll put those interviews on talkmar.com i didn't want to play them here because youtube's been kind of fucking m- mad at me lately for playing shit i shouldn't mm. so inside edward's shoes look at this what do you see here an envelope that's her bank card oh it's a bank card <laughs> so what had happened is edward before this murder before the knife stabbing she had dropped her card and Edward had thought it was his so he tucked it in his own shoe. So obviously when they get there the last place that they're going to look is inside this guy's shoe his loafers. But that's where it was just right there <laughs> in the shoe. Wow. Isn't that nuts? No you guys don't like No I, I'm thinking like <laughs> even if she got away with it it would have only been for so long. You right. know? Yeah. The police thought it was his mistress because obviously they found the body they found her card and then they linked the card to the night before of her being stopped. It was obvious and easy at that point. The three girls were arrested at first. They didn't arrest Tracy Wigington until later because they wanted to build up a case first because they didn't want her to claim insanity since she was the actual killer here. So anyway, Lisa Pachinski, the one who was on the ground crying, she's the one that initially confessed and said, okay, here's everything that happened. And when when they went to arrest Wigington, it was actually during the daytime. So they like brought her out of her house of her apartment with you know where Lisa used to was living they brought her out and since it was during the daytime like her body disintegrated like in the sunlight <laughs> she's, she's like okay he has no idea what she just said yeah I know yes I do it's like twilight <laughs> when Edward was shimmering during the Volturi scene in Rome so she pleaded guilty immediately she was sentenced to life in prison three others pleaded innocent they claimed that Wigington had quote used her occult powers and Kim Jervis the, the ringleader before Tracy Wigington wore a gold cross, like a uh, symbol. Mm. And that was their protection. They were all three real close friends. But, but Interesting Tracy... Interesting they wore a cross as protection, though, because isn't that like opposite of vampire culture? But they claim that Wigington used her, quote, occult powers to break that cross off Kim Jervis's neck, leaving them all powerless. Mm. So Lisa was guilty of murder. She was sentenced to life in prison. This is her right here. That's her. Boom. Is, is that a cell phone? <laughs> it's probably, uh, I mean, yeah. in the 80s? No, not in 85. It might be a calculator. <laughs> what? Dude, that's a fucking cell phone, no, dude. No, this is 1985. Dude, that's a fucking iPhone. What are you talking about? It's a calculator. Why would she be carrying a calculator? Was she- because it's the 80s. I don't know, but they weren't around in the 80s. I mean, the cell phones weren't around in the 80s. Dude, that is, a, it's like those images. It's like this proof of time, time travel. traveler with the, <laughs> yeah. the sun glasses yeah. yeah i love those fucking things man jervis was sentenced to 18 years for manslaughter wah which don't really worry about those people she claimed that she was under a spell this is her right here so she actually walked free of everything <laughs> she broke the spell that's her Dang. mom her mom's like this fucking bitch <laughs> 
<laughs> My daughter wasn't hanging out with those people. <laughs> all right. The lawyers of all three of the girls claimed that they were picking up this victim as as a, quote, elaborate practical joke. And then they also claimed that the, the chain was a, quote, protective crucifix. Kim had worn a cross on a chain around her neck and the chain had broken. And once that broke, she didn't get it fixed, didn't put it back on. That's when Tracy started talking to Kim like she did on Monday night. Once that cross came off, Kim didn't have any protection. Hmm, interesting. So she was sentenced to life. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, that seems appropriate. Yeah. What do you guys think on live chat? Life. Wolfie what? thinks it was a cigarette case. Oh, that's a, that's fair. That is. Yeah. Weird. That's, oh. that's or like one of those key cases where you like copy a key. So well, this she is, did have a cigarette in her hand too. This is 1985. Sentenced to life. I mean, what do you, you guys think? That was a good outcome for murdering and drinking his blood. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think on live chat? And really quick before we um end this, if you want to read this headline, Nicole. Exclusive vampire killer Tracy Wigington's disturbing new posts. So she was actually paroled in 2012. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> she is free, baby. <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding me? This is her right here. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. Is she still subsisting on blood? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Let's see. I want to see the post. I guess the, the rule in Australia is if someone is on parole, they're technically still a prisoner ish in in a weird way. So uh-huh. the the newscasters can can legal, legally not interview them, but they get right close to her and they do the story without talking so to her. It's, it's really like, weird. So it's like they can they can cover her life because she's still technically a prisoner, but they don't have to ask her any questions. They cannot ask her questions, but they'll get like right next to her and do the story about her. Not only was she paroled in 2012, but in 2019, the journalist at Nine News Australia found her Facebook page. She is referring to herself now under a new identity of Oberon Fairchild. She's living in Tambourine and she is posting on her Facebook that she's back, baby. <laughs> and that she is, she's ready to suck some blood. I don't know. Well, it looks like she's eating good in prison. <laughs> 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 I didn't. Wa- I didn't want to go there, but yeah, she. For, well, for, uh, uh, for, Colleen, <laughs> Colleen did say earlier. She was like, uh, "That ain't just from drinking blood, dude. It looks like she's been eating more than blood." I and- dude, I did not want to go there, but I was thinking that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? She's- <laughs> Over in Fairchild oh, is our new <laughs> name of our murderer, Tracy. Oh, and sh- she <laughs> has denied being a vampire, but she just wants to drink their blood. It sounds like she needs to see the medical person, the doctor. She, she's, she's, ow, what the fuck are y'all doing in Australia, yo? You're like Canada. What the fuck? But why is she out? You tell me. Why, but I just want to know why she's out. <laughs> I'm allowed know. to go on parole How and people happen? can't ask a question. Damn. I don't know, man. Dude, d- not in America. That would, she No, would. you can't say that, though, because there are definitely people there who are been definitely people here in America who are yeah, paroled but, before they need to so be. I mean, it's arrested maybe not Canada 19, level, but. You know. 1985 and released in 2012. What is that? Like, uh, I don't know. What is that? I mean, I'm I mean, 1985, so... 30, so almost, she was 25 like years. 27 years. Well, that... So her sentence was actually 27 years to life, so she got... Her 27 years. Was she on good behavior because she was eating more than blood? Dude... Listen, <laughs> like, I'm not making fun of her, but listen, you need to make sure <laughs> that you are... You are making sure that these, these criminals are being treated fairly. She killed a man to drink his blood. We can't turn the accent off guys sorry it's you, you the faucet's been turned on well uh, yeah once i learn how to do it it's hard to turn <laughs> she, off she she she's big now she's like a, well over 300 pounds <laughs> she's huge i don't think she's just drinking blood <laughs> these fucking lesbian vampires man they're fucking gotta watch out <laughs> you know, like, it just seems to be fair you could just call her a vampire you don't seem to make sure she's calling it a lesbian vampire it's because she did that. eat a man's blood it's not like she 
create a lady's blood. Yeah, but she was just, she was so, doing both. She yeah, she was doing both. Oh yeah, to be fair, she was doing both. But she killed a man. <clears throat> so I hope you guys enjoy this episode. You can support us by going to patreon.com slash talk murder. Find this on any podcasting app. Just search talk murder. Listen to our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees, if you like true crime that occurs out in nature. And that's all I have for tonight's episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.